In a recent video, I mentioned that I carry a Faraday bag in my car, so I have the option of making my phone and smartwatch disappear if I choose to do so. If you are wondering why I don't just turn my phone off or put it in airplane mode, it is because phones can still be tracked even when they are turned off, and apps on your phone can still log your location history even when your phone is in airplane mode. Those apps can't share your GPS data while you're in airplane mode, but they can store it and then upload your location history as soon as you turn off airplane mode. Faraday bags work by shielding your electronic devices from radio frequency signals so they cannot send or receive data with anything outside the bag. This means they can be used to prevent your location from being tracked everywhere you go by cell phone towers and privacy violating apps on your smartphone. In this video, I discussed a nurse who started getting suggestions from Facebook that she friend patients and patients' family members who visited the ER where she works. Facebook knew the nurse and several patients were in relatively close proximity for a few minutes and decided to share their Facebook profiles with each other just in case they wanted to connect. And it's not just cell towers and apps that track your location. According to the New York Times, retail and grocery stores now use Bluetooth beacons to know when you enter the store and how long you spend standing in front of certain products on certain store aisles so they can target you with ads for those products the next time you're browsing the internet. Faraday bags are a great tool for protecting your privacy, but not all Faraday bags work as advertised. In this video, I am going to share the results of my own testing on several Faraday bags and a few other items some people believe work like Faraday bags, such as an empty foil line bag of chips. Why would anyone think a bag of chips could prevent their phone from being tracked? Uh-uh. I keep my cell phone in a chip bag. The foil blocks the GPS signal, so they can't track me. Sarah Connor wouldn't lie to us, would she? This is not a sponsored video, and I purchased all of the Faraday bags myself at full price. I am Dr. John Padfield, an engineer turned state representative turned business professor, and this is Business Reform, where we discuss issues at the intersection of business, technology, and society. Location data is some of the most sensitive data about a person. With it, you can infer someone's religion, whether they have participated in a protest, what medical procedures they may have sought, and how often they visit a bar, a donut shop, or some other establishment. In today's world, it isn't usually practical to just leave your phone at home all day, so having a Faraday bag can be useful when you want to avoid being tracked, but still need to have your phone with you. Faraday bags can also be used to prevent your electronic toll collection transponder from being tracked everywhere you go, even miles from the nearest toll station. For all of my tests, I used an iPhone 16 Pro Max. This phone has several forms of wireless communication, and I tested each Faraday bag's ability to block 5G cellular service, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. The phone also has near-field communication, or NFC, for things like Apple Pay, but the range of NFC is less than 2 inches, so I did not bother testing that. The bags I tested included the SimCat Faraday bag, which sells for $15 for a two-pack on Amazon. I also tested the Ready Now Faraday bag, which sells for $17 for a two-pack, and the Mission Darkness non-windowed Faraday bag, which sells for $25, and finally the Mission Darkness windowed Faraday bag, which sells for $52. The windowed bag is not needed for most people, but I wanted to test it and see if it performed as well as the non-windowed version. I also used an empty foil line bag of tortilla chips and some heavy-duty aluminum foil. I also decided to try a couple of household items that I had heard other people say worked, but I was skeptical about them, and I wanted to try them for myself. I tried putting my phone in the refrigerator freezer, in a microwave oven, and in a cast iron pan with a matching lid. To test whether each method would block cellular service, I turned off the Wi-Fi calling on my iPhone, then called my phone from another phone so I could test whether a call made to my phone would go through using cellular service. To test whether each method would block Wi-Fi, I used my iPad to monitor what devices I could connect to via Wi-Fi. When my phone was laying out in the open, it appeared on the My Networks list. 
When I put my phone in a Faraday bag that worked, spoiler alert, not all of them did. My iPhone disappeared from the My Networks list. And to test whether each method blocked Bluetooth, I played music I had saved on my iPhone on a Bluetooth speaker, then put the phone in a bag or microwave to see if the music would keep on playing or if the music stopped because the signal was lost. And finally, I used a radio frequency power meter to measure the RF power density around each Faraday bag. I need to make an important disclaimer about the numbers you're going to see from the power meter in just a moment. When I was working in the automotive industry, I would do this type of testing in a screen room, which blocked all other radio frequency energy such as radio and TV stations, cell phone towers, computers and Wi-Fi routers, etc. So I would know whatever signal I was detecting was coming from the device I was testing. I did not have access to a screen room for these tests, so I conducted them in my living room, where this meter was picking up background signal from my Wi-Fi router, smart speakers, etc. When the RF power meter was laying on the coffee table by itself, it was reading around 1.3 milliwatts per square meter, and when I set my phone next to it, it was reading around 7.6 milliwatts per square meter. However, these numbers fluctuated a little over time, so do not read too much into the numbers themselves that I recorded during the test. I would say these numbers are directionally correct, meaning that a better Faraday bag will have lower readings closer to 1.3, while ineffective Faraday bags will have higher numbers closer to 2 or 3. So what did my test results look like? I listed my 9 Faraday bags or household alternatives down the left column, and I listed my four test procedures across the top row. My phone rang when I called it when my phone was in the Ready Now Faraday bag, when it was inside the chip bag, and when it was inside the freezer, microwave oven, or a covered La Crusade cast iron skillet. All those tests were failures. That means the SimCat Faraday bag, both Mission Darkness bags, and the aluminum foil test were all passes because they successfully blocked cellular signals from getting to my phone. I then ran the Wi-Fi test to see if my phone would disappear from the My Networks list on my iPad, and I got the exact same results. The SimCat Faraday bag, both Mission Darkness bags, and the aluminum foil successfully blocked Wi-Fi signals from reaching my phone. I then ran the Bluetooth test and got nearly the same results, except this time for the aluminum foil. What I found was the aluminum foil produced intermittent blocking. The speaker would quit playing, but if I touched the foil, it would start playing again for a few seconds, then quit again. The bottom line is the aluminum foil was not a reliable method for blocking Bluetooth signals, which meant it was probably marginal at best for blocking the cellular and Wi-Fi signals. For my final test, I used an RF power meter to measure the signal strength near the Faraday bag. From best to worst, the Mission Darkness bags had the lowest readings, followed by the SimCat Faraday bag. These bags consistently blocked cellular, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth signals. The next best was the aluminum foil, followed by the chip bag, followed by the Ready Now Faraday bag. Because I received a two-pack of the Ready Now Faraday bags, I tested both of them just to make sure the first one wasn't defective. The test results were identical on both bags. So the completed data table looks like this. Either Sarah Connor lied to us about the chip bag, or I don't eat the right type of chips. The aluminum foil is neither reliable nor convenient. It is very easy to tear, so I would not trust it. The idea of putting a phone in a freezer or a microwave did not accomplish anything, and I did not bother testing them with the RF power meter, because those devices generate their own radio frequencies, which would have nullified the test results anyway. That means out of all of my testing, there are really only two good options. The Mission Darkness Faraday bags or the SimCat Faraday bag. Between them, the Mission Darkness bags did a better job of shielding the phone as evidenced by the lower RF power meter readings. In addition, the Mission Darkness bag is big enough for me to put my phone and my smartwatch in together, and it feels more durable thanks to the premium materials used in its construction. So my overall recommendation is to go with Mission Darkness if you want a premium Faraday bag, or go with the SimCat if you want a functional but more affordable Faraday bag.
Regardless of which one you choose, I have one piece of advice about using your Faraday bag. Use your Faraday bag. If you allow your cellular carrier and apps to track you 24-7 for years, then your phone suddenly disappears for an hour one day, that might look suspicious. Growing up in the 1970s, I enjoyed the freedom of getting on my bicycle and being gone for hours without being accessible 24-7. I firmly believe our Creator never intended for mankind to live on a digital leash with the expectation of us always being available to immediately answer a phone call or return a text message. Take some time to disconnect from big tech and reconnect with nature. Go on a walk or go on a bike ride. It'll do you more good than you can imagine. Trust me, I'm a doctor. Faraday bags can be a great tool in your privacy toolbox, but they don't solve all the data leakage issues. There are privacy-centric alternatives to Apple and Android phones, such as the Unplugged Phone or Rob Braxman's Brax3 smartphone, which was designed from the ground up to protect your data. If you would like to see reviews on one of these phones or any other piece of privacy-protecting equipment or privacy-enhancing apps, please let me know in the comment section.